right, let's talk about cap rates for a second. Cap rates is probably one of the most misunderstood uh, measurements, one of the mis most misunderstood pieces of the multifamily game. In fact, um, uh, a lot of people, I, I meet a lot of brokers, a lot of people that are professional salespeople that sell apartment buildings and don't really fully understand what the cap rate is and, and what that means. And it's actually pretty simple. It's just a ratio between income and expenses. And what that does is it uh, capitalization rate is the full term what that means uh, or, or what the uh, what the full word is is capitalization rate. Capitalization rate means this. If you bought a building for a million dollars and it was a 10 cap, then you would get 10% of your money back every year. In other words, it would take 10 years to recapitalize your investment. So if you have the, the higher the cap rate, um, the shorter amount of time you would get your money back if you paid cash for the property. So that's the measurement of it. But what a cap rate really does is it measures two like and kind properties in the same marketplace. See, in housing, we can comp houses, right? It's the same house, same neighborhood, similar condition. Um, you're gonna get similar loan, similar uh, everything. And so you can say, okay, this house, if this house on this street would sell for 400, then this house on the same street would sell for approximately $400,000 as well. And so we just do a comparable price analysis when we do housing and other kinds of uh, goods and, and services in the marketplace. But with commercial real estate, we're actually talking about buying a small business. And when you're buying a small business, which is what buying an apartment building is, you're evaluating that business based on its ability to generate income and, and its ability to manage its expenses. And so the cap rate measures um, measures the business as, or measures the, the, the building as a small business. Take your income minus the expenses and that leaves you with your net operating income. And we'll give you the formula. I'll punch the formula into the into the um, comments here in just a minute. But long story short, is the higher the cap rate is, the higher the risk, and the lower the cap rate, the lower the risk. So if you're looking for a 10 cap market, and I hear this all the time, people who are new to this game will come in and say, "Oh man, I'm looking for 10 cap uh, properties, you know, all across the country." And the first thing I realize when somebody says something like that is they must be brand new to the game because everybody knows if you're going to be an expert at something you need to master a, a local market you want to be you want to know who all the players are you want to know the ins the outs what streets uh, have different uh, things going on what's being built in the marketplace and there's no way that you can do that across the country so you want to really focus on your specific target market and in our dealmaker society we talk about focusing on our on our um, target market all the time. We talk about that all the time. You want to be a big fish in a small pond. Even if your pond is a large city, you still want to carve out a small area, a small niche, and just become an expert at that local area. Um, and then you'll be able to, you'll, you know, when you know all the players, you know all the properties, you know all the owners and the sellers and the trends and what rents will be, then you'll have a much more, a much higher ability to have success uh, in that marketplace. Um, getting back to um, getting back to cap rates. Um, when people say to me, "Hey, I'm looking for a 10 cap in any market across the country," really what they're saying is, "I'm looking for a high risk property or a high risk market." Now, let me just give you an example of that because I get all kinds of people give me pushback on this uh, uh, on this conversation. Here's the thing: if you go to New York City, San Fernando Valley which is the second highest demand, second um, most, it's the highest density residential uh, area in the country, second only to Manhattan. The San Fernando Valley, which is the northern uh, suburb of Los Angeles, is the second highest density suburb or highest density residential market in the country, only second to uh, Manhattan in New York State. And so it's also one of the hottest apartment markets. You'll see cap rates in that market if you have C properties in the fours and the fives, you'll see uh, B properties that have cap rates even lower than that, and then A properties in places like in the nicer ends, Sherman Oaks, 
um, Burbank and places like that. I mean, you'll see cap rates that are down in the twos and the threes. You'll also see those kinds of cap rates in markets like New York City, San Francisco, and places like that. And the reason for this is because you'll almost never experience any kind of vacancy rate, right? So these properties will never be vacant. So what does that do for risk, right? What does that do for your risk? If you have a, if you have a building and no matter how poorly you run it, people will want to live there. <laughs> um, it's a very low, low risk uh, investment. So you're going to get a much lower cap rate. Now, if you go to some other markets, sometimes we call those tertiary markets or secondary markets. Maybe it's a small town in, in, in Indiana or maybe it's a, uh, a smaller uh, area in Ohio or places like that. You're going to find properties, apartment buildings, and you're going to be able to find higher cap rates in those markets. And the reason for that is uh, it's not unusual to operate at a 20% vacancy rate or a 15% vacancy rate on a on a you know on a normal uh, day. If you're operating well and you're marketing and you're bringing in tenants, it's not unusual to see those kinds of vacancy rates. Well, all that means is there's just a little bit more risk in the marketplace, and so you're going to get a higher cap rate. So what I want you to take away from this today is cap rates number one are relative to the marketplace, and cap rates number two um, are just a measurement of risk. If you go out in the marketplace and say, hey, I'm looking for a 10 cap, and you don't finish the sentence with what market you're looking in, um, it's kind of like saying, hey, I'm looking to buy houses that are $400,000, right? Now, a $400,000 house in parts of Detroit uh, would be laughable as way overpriced, 10x overpriced probably. But a $400,000 house, let's say in Laguna Beach, would be laughable the other way. Like you'll never find one like that. So if you say I'm looking for a 10 cap in Los Angeles, you would just be it would just be comical, to be honest with you. But if you said I'm looking for a 10 cap, you know, in some other market, it might be more realistic. But it also still might be a uh, uh, you know not the best, not the wisest choice. So just understand that cap rates are relative to their marketplace, just like saying a price per house was relative to the marketplace. $400,000 house in one market is, is a great buy, and a $400,000 house in another market is maybe not such a great buy. So just be aware of that. Just like a six cap in one market is a great buy, as a six cap in another market is maybe not such a great buy. Keep that in mind. Cap rates are a measure of risk, and cap rates measure the efficiency of management of the property. And we look at these properties, income producing properties, apartments, commercial real estate, any income producing property, it is a small business. It, re, it operates, it has income, it has marketing, it has all the components of any other small business. There's just a real estate component to it as well. So we want to evaluate them based on their management performance and that's all cap rate measures.